Hey, my name is Edrin. You might have seen some of my work around here on YouTube before. Did you know that CSP is very capable at handling animation? Of course you probably knew that because everybody talks about it all the time. It's really accessible for it, however, so today I'm going to be showing you how you can get started animating in CSP. But wait, you don't have the EX version of CSP? Well, good news, you can still animate in CSP using the Pro version. Your only limitation will be that you're limited to 24 frames. For this tutorial, I'm going to be going over a lot of the interface and the basics behind how to get started animating because, in my personal opinion and experience, animation goes a lot faster and is a lot easier when you understand the interface and you're not trying to struggle with where certain UI elements are. Fair warning, I use hotkeys a lot, so I've got an on-screen display to show my inputs. Some of my key bindings I've remapped. I've tried to move all my key bindings over to the left side because I use them a lot, and I would recommend that you do so too but I've got an on-screen keyboard displaying what I'm pressing at any given time, and I'll try to point out anything that I've rebound myself. To begin, we need to make a new file. I'm going to just go with 700 by 700 for demonstration purposes. You can do whatever size you want or need. Next, we want to make sure that we can see the timeline, which you can access by going up to Window, Timeline, or just clicking down at the bottom if you already have it on your screen. There's this little button here that says New Timeline. You can also access this option by going up to Animation, Timeline, New Timeline. This creates where all the magic will happen. You'll see a bunch of options pop up, and we can choose settings for how the animation will play back here. The most important option here is the frame rate. Most animation is going to be in 24 frames per second, however a lot of it is also done on twos, which is equivalent of animating at 12 frames per second, which is what I would recommend. You can do whatever frame rate you want, but one thing I would recommend is trying to keep it around 12 or so, because if you're on the pro version, the next option, playback time, is limited to 24. This basically means that you have only 24 frames that you can work with on the pro version. This means that if you're at 12 frames per second, that's going to be 2 seconds of animation, whereas 24 frames per second would be only 1, and higher than that would be even less. That aside, animation is a little bit easier to do when you're working at lower frame rates. The other options don't really influence anything mechanically, so I'm not going to go over them. So if you've animated before, you probably know what most of these things are, but if you haven't, I'm going to go over them really quick. This little red thing here, this is called the playhead. This is which frame is currently displayed on your timeline. These little blue bars, meanwhile, are the playback range of your animation. You can use these to quickly change the length if you need to isolate something or if you need to loop just a small section of an animation or just play back a single part of it. And lastly, you can see any active layers down on the timeline itself, and you can even control their size, like so. So now what you might be thinking is you're going to take a bunch of layers and you're going to shrink them all down to one frame each and then you're going to start drawing each individual drawing on all these different layers, but Fred, wait up there, there is a better way. CSP has this cool thing called an animation folder, and you can have multiple of these on your timeline. With your timeline open, there's these new buttons that have popped up. One of them is called New Animation Folder. Of course, all of these that I'm going to go through can also be accessed from up top at Animation, New Animation Layer, or New Animation Cell, etc. So animation folders are really great. After you make one, you will see the other buttons will light up. The first one, New Animation Cell. Clicking this will make a new layer in the animation folder and give it a spot on the timeline. Each time you click it, it'll increment by 1. Clicking the frame on the timeline, or likewise clicking the layer in the layer browser, will jump to the corresponding frame or layer, making navigation a cakewalk. Interestingly, the layer that's made will depend on the previous frame or layer in the folder. If you have a vector layer in the folder, any new cells will be vector layers as well. This even works for groups and folders. The next button is Specify Animation Cell. This allows you to reuse and recycle frames that you've already drawn, such as if you delete an exposure or need to reuse an animation. The final button is Delete Specified Cells. This removes the frame from the timeline, but doesn't delete it from the animation folder. Conversely, if you delete a layer from an animation folder, it'll keep the spot on the timeline in case you ever do make a new layer with that name. Do note that you can also move frames around after they're created, and even make box selections around multiple frames if you need to clear out multiple frames at once. The last button I'll mention is Show Onion Skin. This allows you to see the after images of the previous and next frames. You can control the color, number of frames, transparency, and so on via Animation, Show Animation Cells, Onion Skin Settings. I'll be going over how to effectively use this tool and onion skinning in general in part two of this tutorial series, as it's very important for doing in-betweens and things like that. In the meantime, however, to recap everything we've just covered, I've put a brief description of all these buttons on the screen. Speaking of part two, in the background, I currently have a bit of a time lapse of what's to come. So, this tutorial showed you how to use the interface, which might be enough for you to get started animating yourself. Next time, however, I'm going to be covering how to use CSP to make animations of your own. 
I'll be redrawing one of the scenes from my old animation, Hero the Dense. Speaking of, if you want to see some more animations of my own, or check out some of my other tutorials, be sure to check out my channel.